Now, you know what? This ain't gonna work for me today because I'm not playing Anthony DiNardo, but instead, Pat Riley, the Godfather. So yeah, so I'm gonna go through these free agents uh, and basically tell you all the ones that I like. Of course, number one is pretty much number one on all of Heat fans' list is Christian Wood. I mean, the guy is only 27. He's 6'10", and he is the ideal, perfect four next to Bam. I mean, I got the numbers next to me. 15 points per game for his career, seven rebounds a game. Uh, obviously, his numbers as of late are better because as a young guy, he wasn't getting a ton of run. But for his career, he's at 52% from the field. 38% from three, and that's on three and a half attempts. So my question becomes, why do all of his previous fan bases hate him? I mean, you look at the numbers, they are great. The dude has been scoring very, very well the last few years, even had a season about 20 points per game. His efficiency is good, but yet, most of his fan bases don't like him. But honestly, I don't really care about that. Give Spolstra a guy with talent and he will make his magic work. And of course, the fit with Bam is beautiful. We'll finally have a starting power forward who's taller than 6'4 for the first time in a few years. You obviously had Caitlin Marr and PJ Tucker and I love those guys, but still, I want somebody with some size, pause, unpause. Christian Wood, 6'10", solid rebounder, uh, and he would obviously allow Bam to still play center, which is something I don't really care about, to be honest. I think Bam is versatile enough where he could play the four or the five, but a lot of people do want to keep Bam at the center spot, and this signing would allow him to do that. I think Christian Wood would slide in beautifully at that starting four spot. And for the next available free agent that I have on my list, I'm gonna let y'all guess. I'm gonna give you a hint, you ready? You got it? And no, that, that wasn't me trying to be sus again for the second time this episode. Of course, I'm talking about TJ Warren at only 29 years old. He's averaging 15 points per game for his career on 50% shooting and 35% from three. The thing that I like best about him is he got that dog in him. Y'all remember him and Jimmy Butler getting into it. Y'all were calling him a menace. I was saying he was spitting that heat culture. I mean, I really wasn't saying that. I did not like him at the time, but he's proven himself. Y'all remember Bubba Warren had 50 points that one game and he was averaging close to 20 points per game for a few years before he got hurt, but he was playing last year. So he seems that he can be healthy and I really like everything he brings to the table. He's 6'8", so he could be a very, very solid backup wing, especially if the Heat were to lose Caitlin Warren and a potential Damian Lillard deal. I really think TJ Warren could do a great job sliding in that role. Oh, As I'm gonna have to stop you right there uh, because you think that you can guard me that's crazy. Listen, if I make this shot, you gotta subscribe and like the video right now. Let's get it. That is wild. Okay, you know what? Unsubscribe, leave, leave a dislike, I don't give a fuck. He's a guy who could both score, but also be effective on the defensive end. And I remember there was rumors about the Heat actually getting him last year. So they have shown interest in the past. So it would not surprise me if he's a the guy they try to go after. And the third guy I have on my list is the guy who I think has the second best nickname in the NBA besides Sauce Castillo. I mean, that's just great. But a Tsunami Poppy at only 27 years old, he'll bring some handsome back to the Miami Heat after we lost Max Drews and Gabe Vincent. Is that sus? Why is the Pat Riley persona bringing the sus out of me? I don't know. But I'd like if Kelly Oubre came to the Heat because now my girl might actually have a reason to watch the Heat games with me. Regardless of why she's watching, she'll still sit down and watch some games with me. But Kelly Oubre, 27 years old, 20 points per game last season. Now the thing is though, and the reason why he's not as high on my list as he is for some other Heat fans is his percentages aren't great. I mean, last year he shot 43% from three and 32% overall. Uh, and I really don't like those shot chucker types. I mean, guys like Deion Waiters really pissed me off aside from those two weeks where he was him. Y'all remember the Golden State game winner followed by the Cleveland game winner followed by the Brooklyn game winner. Speaking of Dion, supposedly he's, he's having some workouts. I've had some Heat uh, friends or Heat fan friends ask me if I want him. The answer is no. And if you want Dion Waiters, you're wrong. Don't, don't get that man anywhere near my team. But Kelly Oubre is 6'7 and super athletic. So you hope that when he gets into a Heat culture system under Eric Spolster, he can use those tools to become a great defender because I certainly think he's capable. And then you're talking about a very, very good player now. Why would he accept a free agent, uh, a minimum contract either? Or why is he still a free agent, I should say? I don't know. And that does concern me too. And the fourth guy I have on my list is a guy that every single Heat fan should want to get back. It's my brate, Gogi Goran Dragic. Now, yes, after losing Gabe Vincent, the Miami Heat will need a backup point guard of some kind. And who better to do it than our old friend, Goran Dragic. Now, yeah, he's probably not the best option available at 37 years old, but the last we saw Goran Dragic, 
he was getting swept by uh, by the Heat, you know, when he was with the Bucks. Uh, but before that, he was getting swept by uh, while on the Nets. But before that, he was with the Chicago Bulls and he killed Miami for that one game. And obviously before that, he was a very, very impactful player for the Miami Heat. But to be honest, it's just vibes. You know, people said that he got to the finals last year based off the power of friendship and tomfoolery. So bring in some more friendship in here. Get get Jimmy's real best friend back. I'm tired of this Kyle Lowry. I don't know what, what they kind of friendship they have to get him on his team, but get him out of here and bring in Goran Dragic. Now, I actually do think there is a role for him on this team. I mean, they seriously do need a backup point guard and I don't think, you know, Dragic is the guy that could play 82 games anymore, 30 minutes a night. But hey, if you can get 15 to 20 minutes a night, a guy that you can trust with the ball, a guy that can get some buckets if things are going cold, I do like Goran Dragic to fit that role. So y'all like that one, right? Because everybody likes a nice homecoming. And speaking of that, the last guy who's currently a free agent that I want to see back in the Miami Heat is everybody's favorite big man, Dwayne Dedman. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't even joke about that. Dwayne Dedman is one of the biggest bums that I've ever seen in my entire life. But the guy that I'm actually about to say, y'all might think is a bigger bum. So I kind of led with Dwayne Dedman just to soften the blow. But I'm sorry. Hassan Whiteside is sitting out there without a job, and I think he could help this team. Now listen, don't 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 dislike the video. Don't hate on me. I mean, you probably already are in the comments below. And I understand that 99% of Heat fans hate him, and I get it. He took the money, he chased his stats, and did all that other bad stuff and got lazy, but I still do love Hassan Whiteside. And the reason I love him is just because I kind of fell in love with him as a kid, because he kind of came out of nowhere. I thought his story was awesome. And seeing a guy take over a game on the defensive end was just really, really exciting to me because at the time I had never really seen anything like that. And I guess even since, I mean, I always said about Whiteside, he used to get hot blocking shots, just like Steph Curry could get hot shooting threes. And I always thought that was so cool, man. Seeing a guy get block after block and the snatch blocks were so nasty. I really liked Whiteside. And yes, I agree. He became a fat cat when he got paid and he was terrible after that. But listen, keyboard after he got paid. If you was to bring back Whiteside, he'd be on a minimum deal. And I know y'all remember how good minimum Whiteside is. I mean, you talking centers all time. You got Hakeem Olajuwon. You got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And right under that, you have minimum contract Hassan Whiteside. And hear me out, man. There is a role for him on this team. I know you could say Miami has their bigs with Bam. If you want to throw in K-Love. And then, of course, they signed Thomas Bryan and Orlando Robinson. But those bigs are considered to be more slow-footed. They're considered to be more rebounded slash offensive-minded bigs. Which, yes, the Miami Heat do need. But I think that you can put a guy like Hassan Whiteside, a true seven-footer who is super, super strong. You can put him to body Nikola Jokic, and he won't get killed like Mr. Z, Cody Zeller was last year. Now, yeah, Whiteside's not going to stop uh, Jokic. Nobody will. But I think he'd do a better job than guys like Thomas Bryant and Orlando Robinson. He's there for defense. He's a defensive first player. And I think Miami needs someone like that. And they certainly need someone who could rebound. And that's what Hassan Whiteside does. So did I convince you on that? I know, probably not. But I do have some honorable mentions of guys. These are kind of the names that we've heard a lot of, who I also do like. You got Terrence Ross, similar to Kelly Oubre, could provide that bench scoring role, which I think Miami will need. You got another homecoming guy, Derek Jones Jr., could be a backup wing, slim, similar to TJ Warren, but obviously the jump shot's a little iffy. That's kind of why I like those other guys that I picked. And then you also got Ish Smith, who at this time, might be a little bit of a better play than Goran Dragic, but if they didn't want to go after Dragic, I do want a solid veteran point guard on this team. I think Ish Smith could be that. And then another name I wrote is Jermichael Green, who a few years ago I would have loved, could shoot the three a little bit, you know, kind of a mid rebounder, but he would be a solid starting four. I just think he fell off quite a bit since his prime. And the last honorable mention I want to name is a guy that I'm actually not a fan of adding back to this team. It's another homecoming guy. We've all heard his name a lot. It is Justice Winslow. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Justice Winslow when he was here, particularly Point Justice. Y'all remember that. Y'all remember hashtag Justice Better. I was a huge proponent of that. He was awesome on the defensive side of the ball. His jump shot was coming along. He could guard one through four, but things did end kind of sour. There were some talks between them, between him and the front office, whether he was healthy or whether he was hurt. Things kind of ended on a sour note, and he really hasn't been healthy since. He even has some health issues with Portland last year. Forgot if it was like his foot or his leg. 
But the last thing I want to do is bring back a Justice Winslow who is still injured. I just think that could cause problems. So obviously in theory, yes, I like the idea of Justice and what he brings to the table, particularly point Justice, but that was a while ago. I mean, we've seen a good Goran Dragic way, way more sooner than we've seen a good Justice Winslow, it feels like. But that's basically all I got from my free agent wish list, I guess you could say. I try to pick a, a good mix of positions because obviously we don't know who they're going to be sending out in a Damian Lillard trade. And I also tried to pick a mix of ages, uh, a mix of ages because as a win now team, you want more veteran guys. But I'm also tired of bringing in the old ass Kyle Lowry's and PJ Tucker's and Kevin Love's who were good. They just can't seem to make it through a full season, and that's kind of my problem with that. And it's important to note too, I think the Heat have three open roster spots right now. It's something like that, two, three, four, I forget, but they will most likely be sending out more players in a Damian Lillard trade than they will be receiving. So some roster spots will open up, and to me, that's a big reason that this is very important that this Dame trade gets done soon because the longer you wait, the more the free agent market is going to dry up. You might have a guy like Christian Wood pick the Lakers when he was considering signing with you. Now, we've seen some of that happen already. A guy like Dario Sarge is a guy that I liked and he just signed with the Warriors. So this is not a critical issue yet, but it's not something I want to play around with too, longer, uh, too much longer because I don't think it's insignificant. But that's all I got for this video. It was very hard to record because I had to record it in minute long segments on the Snapchat filter app. I was only gonna do like the first one, but then I got carried away and before I knew it, I was like, I might as well see it through my boy. So leave a like on the video if you enjoyed because it took a lot of work. But if you didn't enjoy, you could still leave a dislike because I can't tell you what to do. I, I just can't. E even though they may say respect your elders, I can't tell you what to do. But that's all I got for this video. So I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Look, pull up in the city trying to get that dead fast. Slash. Do it on my own. I don't need no dead weight. Right. Had to kill him off. Yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.